good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here. And today we have some news from the dev blog concerning quite a few balance changes. And as you can tell by the title of this video, there's some balance changes that I'm sure a lot of you are very excited for and a lot of you are very not so happy with. And I'll get to that and give you my two cents on how I feel about that here in a minute. Alright, so link to the dev blog is in the description down below again all as always do keep in mind these changes are preliminary and the final information will be published on the game's website so let's get going with it pt 11.1 balance changes the changes will be applied to super ships german battleships and other ships we will all also unify the speed up characteristics of ships so German super battleship Hanover, she actually gets a bit of a buff here almost. Required number of successful salvos to activate combat instructions decreased from 16 to 12. The timer to start resetting the progress of combat instructions if the ship is not firing changes from 45 to 50. Well, actually, that's not kind of a buff. That is straight up a buff. So the combat instructions, that is the special power-up you get after firing so many salvos at your target. In the case of the Hanover, it increases secondary accuracy and increases secondary range. So you can have 14 kilometers secondaries with the handover if you fully build into secondaries and if you have the combat instructions cranked all the way up. Now that only takes 12 salvos instead of 16 and you have to shoot at the target. Actually, I think it's sh maybe sh number of shells. They say salvos, but the way that if they haven't changed it from the last time I've I played super ships, it's the number of individual shells. So it takes 12 sh shells now instead of 16. And Hanover is an 8-gun battleship. So that's uh, two full salvos now, almost. No. Hmm. I have to play it again and see exactly what that's like. But either way, the number of salvos was, was reduced to four. And then the timer to, that starts resetting which means if you've played the super ships, that yellow bar that fills up at the bottom of your reticle, that takes 50 seconds to start to drop now rather than 45, which I think is pretty appropriate, especially in something like a battleship where it takes 30 seconds to reload the guns. So that is some nice changes to the Hanover. The Satsuma, on the other hand, is getting absolutely beat in the head with the Nerf bat. Main battery reload time increased from 30 to 33 seconds. Now, the Satsuma is a 8-gun battleship as well, but unlike the Hanover that only has 19-inch secondaries, puny, sec uh, puny main battery guns, 19-inch secondaries, I wish, um, the Satsuma has 20-inch main battery guns. So, and she has 8 of them. 8 20-inch guns, which is 2 more than any of the other 20-inch ships that we have at Tier 10 right now. So, yeah, 33 second reload time, that is understandable. Now, again, this is without modules equipped with modules equipped that you can, you can get that back down to around 30 seconds which i'm assuming most satsuma players take the reload module there anyway all right the eagle the british supercarrier changed the altitude of jet attack aircraft when cruising preparing for an attack and aiming as well as their angle of attack these changes are intended to improve the interaction of these aircraft with islands and make aiming with them more comfortable. The maximum vertical and horizontal spread of the jet attack aircraft aiming reticle was reduced in order to increase gameplay comfort. And here's something similar on the United States. Change the altitude of jet attack aircraft when cruising, preparing for an attack and aiming. Their angle of rolling during the attack preparation phase was also adjusted. These changes are intended to improve the interaction of these aircraft with islands and make aiming with them much more comfortable. Um, I and the, the thing is, when they say change the altitude or change the parameters of any type of attack or dispersion or anything, you can't really tell until you've played it. And I, I have played the United States. I played it on stream a few weeks ago. I did use the jet attack aircraft, and they are quite difficult to aim with. You have a you have to have a huge run up with them, and once you hit that booster, you gotta go for it. Um, and they are not, I didn't find them incredibly difficult to use. The islands did mess me up quite a bit, but islands mess up any planes. Now I, I doubt they're making it to where you can comfortably shoot over islands. Maybe they decrease the time it takes for the plane to settle back down to the normal altitude, because again, the, the speed at which these planes are going, um, 
in the time it takes for the normal attack aircraft to, and I'm talking about, talking about just the propeller ones, to settle down after going over an island, the jets have covered probably a quarter of the map. <laughs> These do go 340 knots. So we'll see what those changes do. All right, the Finyang and the Ship Smasher. I'm assuming that's the Finyang that's going to be participating in the Rogue Wave event, or is it from some type of, co some type of co collaboration? I don't know, but it's both Finyang. Increase the mass of AP and HE shells. Maximum AP shell damage increased from 1900 to 2050. These changes are aimed at improving the baseline penetration and ballistic stats of both shell types, while also emphasizing the role of AP as the main ammunition type for these two destroyers. Okay, haven't played much Fen Yang, can't really attest too much to that. But here's something I can attest to, the German battleship changes. And these are, of course, the German battle cruisers. So, the McKinson, which is the Tier 6. The Prince Heinrich, which is the Tier 7. Ship detection range with hydroacoustic search active reduced from 5.5 to 5 kilometers. Torpedo detection range reduced from 3.75 to 3.6 kilometers. So, the Hydro's range... On German ships are six kilometers. It's been fairly standardized. And I don't know if this means that they are reducing the range of hydro. I mean, this is effectively reducing the effective range of hydro down to five kilometers. Because hydro will pick up ships first, then a couple kilometers in, it'll pick up the torpedoes. It doesn't immediately pick up torpedoes from the full six kilometers. But the way it's sounding, essentially, the range has been reduced to five kilometers. And torpedo detection range has been cut down to 3.6 from 3.75. Not massive changes, but long-range, long-duration hydro has always been a, a uh, characteristic of the German tech line and cruisers, uh, destroyers, and, well, I should say long-range for their class, at least for, again, cruisers, destroyers, and the uh, battleships and battle cruisers, and even the carriers when the Graf Zeppelin. Yes, Graf Zeppelin had hydro back in the day. Boy, that was a time ago. And then the Z-10, the Prince Ruprecht, and the Schlieffen. Ship detection range with hydroacoustic search. Active reduced from 6 to 5.5. Torpedo detection range reduced from 4 to 3.75. So again, here we saw the effective range of hydro be reduced down to 5.5 kilometers. And then the torpedo range reduced as well. And then finally, the most painful change in this list. Schlieffen. Reload time for the 105mm secondary armament increased from 3 to 3.2 seconds. Reload time for the 150mm secondary armament increased from 6.7 to 7.1 seconds as well. So a 0.2 second change on the 105s and a 0.4 second change on the 150s. And they add here at the end of the German change list, the ships from the newest German battleship branch are quite effective against enemy destroyers due to their good speed, concealment, and hydroacoustic search range in order to both decrease their influence in battle and further distinguish them from the original German battleships branch characterized by having a higher detectability range and a lower speed. We've changed the parameters of their hydroacoustic search consumables, which is a little bit weird to point that out. Out, they say the main difference is the lower, uh, sorry, having a higher detection range and lower speed for the main branch, which is very much true. The German battle cruisers are some really darn stealthy ships, and building to their secondaries into their stealth is what really gets them going. And then they say, yeah, so since that's too different, we're nerfing their hydro. Okay. Um, and uh, they, do they outright come and say it here? Uh, yeah. That they're effective against enemy destroyers. I'll, I don't know. It's a weird explanation. They're too effective against destroyers, so we're nerfing their hydro a bit and nerfing their secondaries on the Schlieffen. That's all you had to say. Um, now, with the changes to the Schlieffen, uh, there's probably going to be, what, 200 comments on this video saying, oh, look, they you know made the secondaries invincible so they can go ahead and nerf the Schlieffen secondaries. I think it was pretty clear from even before the Schlieffen was released that the secondaries are, that the secondaries are kind of really extremely nutty. Again, we're talking about a ship with, like, 32 guns on each side. Like, we're, like sh straight up, man of war, Spanish galleon levels of firepower <laughs> on the side of the ship. With, uh, when you build into it, you know, sub two second reload times with um, uh, Luchens' skill and full modules and adrenaline rush going. It, you know, it was going to get nerfed. I think that was pretty clear from the beginning. And in reality, it's not really that much of a nerf. I mean, 0.2 seconds on the 105s and 0.4 seconds on the 150s. We'll see how it starts to crank down with this update. 
uh, when it gets released. But I mean, we're, we're still talking about ships that can easily get 500 secondary hits in a normal game, not in a crazy game where you've got like a, a Yamato and your secondary range the entire time, but just a, a normal game. The game you're watching right now, I barely had ships in my secondary range, and I still think I got over 200 and something secondary hits. And that's a lot with GK before the Schlieffen got released. And again, this match where I'm really not in secondary range for that long, we still, I think, get either darn near 200 or over 200. So I can see why this would uh, would have happened one way or another. I don't think, even if they threw out the patch where the secondaries were invincible, even if they left it alone for another month and just used that data, it, this probably would have happened. Either way, it's unfortunate. It makes me a little sad inside because, again, I really like the Schlieffen. I really like, again, you know, a Spanish galleon basically being loaded by a bunch of methed out Spaniards. You know, again, it's pretty fun to play, but I don't think it's going to, like, ruin the ship or anything. So we'll see what happens with that, but hopefully that might be the end of it there. Big news, big, big news. Speaking of ships being nerfed, Tier 10 Soviet aircraft carrier, the Admiral Nakimov. Size of the attacking flight of both base and researchable skit bomber squadrons decreased from 8 to 7. What did I say? That's exactly what the ship needed. And, yeah, it makes sense with the skip bombers. I was in a match before this with a very good Nakamov player that was just one line dropping destroyers, like, out of existence in two or three passes with the skip bombers. Because, again, destroyer AA, unless it's the Holland or uh, an American DD, it, it can't do much against them. And the man's just one line dropping, landing, like, I think six or seven out of the eight skip bombs one line drop on DDs. Needs to say too that with all eight skip bombers, you can easily do like 25, 30k to battleships and cruisers and such. It's freaking nutty. Now, I do think this also needs to happen to the rocket planes as well, because again, the rocket planes in the Nakamov are absolutely ridiculous. You fire 30 something, I think it's 32, 36 rockets in one attack wave, and needs to say that's going to start two or three fires on an enemy ship, do like 15, 16k in damage. So, yeah, hopefully we see some other squadron sizes get knocked down a bit too. Again, I think that's really what the Nakamov needs, and it'll be a, a much more balanced. Uh, carrier along with a tiny nerf to the re the re uh, region rate of planes. The last time I talked about the Nakamov in the video, entitled, you know, why the hell hasn't the ship been nerfed, talking about the Nakamov, I was making terrible decisions with my aircraft, like they were e eating the flak, like it was, you know, it was going out of style, and I still didn't run out of planes until the very, very end of the match, and it was a full on like 20 minute match, and even then, I only had to wait not even that long on the carrier to get full squadrons again. So I think knocking one more plane off each squadron and a little bit of nerf to the region time of the planes, I think the Nakamov would be in a good place. Alright, Incomparable fixed an issue that decreased the ship's acceleration when the engine boost consumable was active, so now we can really zoom in the Incomparable. That's kind of funny, the engine boost makes the ship accelerate slower. Uh, the black, the black, the tier 9 premium American Fletcher that has radar, surveillance radar time reduced from 22 to 19 seconds. They did say they were going to bring the black back for, I think, uh, coal or steel. But, of course, they got to nerf it first. And, and granted, the, the ship was, like, ridiculously busted. Like, stupidly busted. A Fletcher with radar. So, yeah. All right, the Henri the Fourth. The time it takes for engines to reach full power while moving forward has been reduced from 60, from, sorry, from 70 to 60 seconds, while moving in reverse from 60 to 50 seconds. Okay, um, Henri getting some of her jukes back. I mean, they still gave her the battleship dispersion, um, battleship dispersion, battleship acceleration model, which pain in the Henri the Fourth. That was a wonderful throttle juker. I mean, she still is decent at it. But um, maybe this will start to make things right with her. I just say to give her back her old formula. That thing was wonderful. And naturally, like, I got the Henri, and then they changed it. Naturally. Naturally, that happens. All right, so an interesting tidbit here at the end. Unification of the speed-up characteristics of ships. We unified speed-up characteristics of ships of all types and tiers. Changes applied to the Otago, Otago B, Takao, Art Maya. The time it takes for the engines to reach full power while moving forward has been reduced from 50 to 40 seconds, while in reverse from 30 to 20. Leone, the Tier 6 um, premium Italian space program ship, 
the line it takes for engines the, I'm sorry the time it takes for engines to reach full power while moving forward has been reduced from 40 to 20 seconds while moving in reverse from 20 to 10 man I'm actually may help out that ship uh, that ship uh, a bit you know it's a tier 6 DD and she I mean she wasn't incredibly slow when I played her but this might help her a bit acceleration is slightly worse when the engine is damaged that makes sense all right, so the Eagle, the United States, the Nakamov, the Audacious, and the Midway. The time it takes for engines to reach full power has been increased while moving forward from 30 to 60 seconds. Oof, slow CVs now. I do find it weird that the British, Soviets, and American carriers all have the same acceleration characteristics now. It's a little strange. All right, Shorn Horse and Shorn Horse B. Acceleration is slightly worse than when the engine is damaged. Makes sense. Uh, the Tone, the Tier 8 um, Japanese hybrid cruiser. Acceleration is slightly... Wait, what? Acceleration is slightly improved when the engine is damaged? What? Is that a typo? Acceleration is slightly improved when the engine is... What? How does that make the engine faster? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, if a shell goes through the engine, sure, a chunk of it's missing, so you got some weight reduction going on. But what does the crew get down and paddle? That's weird. Um, and when the engine is damaged, you don't you you don't have any acceleration. Do they mean like if it's damaged and you have less stand equipped? I I I I don't know. Okay, all right, the Hashidati. Uh, oh, whoa, same thing. The Hashidati and the Shinong, the Hashidati is the Tier 1 uh, IJN cruiser, and the Shinong is the Tier 1 Pan-Asian cruiser. Acceleration is slightly improved when the engine is, and when the engine is damaged. What the? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, the Tier 7 French DD, the Vacolin. I probably murdered that. Sorry, baguettes. Acceleration is slightly worsened when the engine is damaged. That, that makes sense. Okay, so like, I get why you know the engine's damaged. It should go slower. When the engine in my car breaks, the car doesn't go as fast. But how come for the Tone, the Hashidari, and the Shenang, when the engine is damaged, the acceleration is slightly improved? I don't understand. Um. Huh. Now, maybe is it like, when they mean acceleration, do they mean deceleration too? So I get, you know, like the engine gets damaged and then the ship slows down quicker because the engine's damaged maybe the hull of the ship isn't very hydrodynamic or something compared to some other ships but then again with the uh, vacalin acceleration is slightly worse than when the engine is damaged and i'm assuming again this is too with like last stand activated so you know when your engine gets knocked out you're running on last stand so the, the engine's slower but then the acceleration's better i that seems counterintuitive i don't know let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below if you've heard from wargaming um do explain what that means because it just doesn't make sense in my mind. Anyway, guys, that's the big announcements from this dev blog. Again, ner slight nurse to the Schlieffen, slight nurse to the Nakamal. Nakamal definitely need it. And I do know there's more than likely a fair few players out there that do think the Schlieffen needed to be nerfed a little bit, especially DD players, because let's be honest, this thing would rip DD's a new one if it got to win the secondary range, because he's got a 12.5 kilometer secondary range. Yeah, it's pretty effective. But granted, the secondaries did have to spool up to the full accuracy for 45 seconds, so what's a DD doing chilling in, in a Schlieffen secondary range for 45 seconds? That is a debate that will probably rage on in the comments section and on the forums for years to come. But anyway guys, let me know what you guys think about these changes in the comments down below. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday. I'll be live streaming right here tonight from 5pm US Central Time to 8pm US Central Time on the channel and on Twitch. So please come out for that. We normally have a pretty darn good time. We'll be uh, doing divs with the community for the last hour of the stream as well. So again, come out for that and let us have a good time. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. One way to 35,000 subs and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.